Hello, my name is Steve DiPaolo, and I'm presenting our paper, Movement Awareness Through Emotion-Based Aesthetic Visualization. The paper is by myself, Sarah Savetti, Kristen Carlson, and Tekla Shiphorst. Uh, this is a, a picture of myself and co-author Sarah Savetti, um, where we feel bad that we couldn't make it uh, physically there this year. Uh, we've done a, a number of papers at EVA, and we feel quite tight with the community. So sorry we have to do this um, this other remote version. Uh, I would like to report that this work and other work that Sarah has done at, at EVA with me, um, she's now defended in her thesis and passed it, so she's now Dr. Sarah. So I will report on this paper. So it's about aesthetic visualization where we're, we've done this before in art therapy, and I'll show you some of that in review, but in this case, we're looking, looking at education with movement awareness, this adaption of our uh, affective computational creativity system that we've done in art education, art therapy, and interactive arts, but now moving it into movement awareness. That is visualizing you, the way you breathe, move, and feel into an interactive painting, we do this with our AI-based generative art system. And in a way, it depicts the state, the flow, and the emotion of human movement. We do it for casual and professional dancers. We're working with movement experts who asked us to do this because they felt that people don't really know how they move and think about their movement very much. And by doing this level of visualization uh, where they have to move and they get a sense of their movement because it creates a painting, that that was the education they were interested in. There's related work in dance visualization and emotional visualization within the paper, but I'm, uh, we're going to move on. So I'm going to show you that our lab does uh, work in uh, uh, dancers and movement and 3D avatars, but very much from a cognitive sense. So we try and understand the thinking process that a human in a social situation or a movement situation or an art creative situation goes through, and we try and build that in our systems. So we have eight PhDs and one postdoc. This is Ulysses, our postdoc, with our system. And in general, no matter how we do it, there's a human uh, and we're tracking them. Here is a Kinect, an overhead camera, and other motion capture tracking devices, and then also other kinds of uh, emotional tracking as well. Uh, we track that. That goes into our AI system, and we try and understand it. And then whether it's um, turning into the response, an emotional or effective response through gesture of a character or of actual creative paintings, that's what we're after. We are doing a little bit more of the emotion tracking these days. So we have the Empatica watch, which uh, does medical grade um, uh, galvanic response and heart rate. It's um, uh, so we can actually get emotional data uh, of how you're feeling as well, although it's, it's a new research area. We also can get uh, understanding things from just looking at the, the video of your face. So this is Mariam, and we see that she's a female, and get her age, and basically angry, happy, sad, surprised. We can get some data that way. In this case, we're getting her smile, uh, and uh, at least this character is, uh, depending on its emotional state, is smiling back. Um, so this is a typical setup where there's a connect down here, and because it's introverted, it moved back uh, when she moved too forward, so from a personal space, this is the camera tracking her face, and you can see the Connect system. Um, so we're actually doing experiments here to understand everything about human nonverbal communication with these repeatable studies, and we're doing it with rock, paper, scissors. They actually do, uh, there's uh, students who come in actually play a game with this character over and over again. And then we say, well, what, what did you think the emotion of the character was? And we could really change the emotional setup to understand this uh, for, again, human to human, but also human to avatar for better gaming systems, better web systems, better robot systems. Uh, so it could be right, quite realistic, but this paper is more about moving into art space and, and thinking about artistic depiction. Uh, you can imagine that this is still kind of an entity that could be floating in your VR world. Um, art is an amazing thing uh, compared to the realistic one. We at times like the art better than, say, 
a straightforward realistic photograph. We wait online to go into a museum. We pay extra money for it, uh, millions in the case of Rembrandt. There's something amazing about art that really engages humans. If we can make art systems and vary it, well, we can engage people. And with the varying, we could uh, instruct you, education, art therapy, and we're doing all those things. So here's a bit of our system that we have our AI system and we have some affective systems or movement systems and from that it goes through and we get movement out uh, um, in the, as a painting so you would move in front of a camera for five to ten seconds we would set that up as um, a long exposure photograph we would do extra levels of tracking and we would turn that into a painting i'll talk a little bit about our or general painting systems. So this is the older system that we've reported on uh, where we've done studies to show the genius of artists and the cognitive nature of artists. So here's a PhD student, Rembrandt, and then this was not painted by hand. This was through our system. The system was a much more elaborate scripting system. We've since moved into systems where we keep teaching more and more to the computer about what a face is, what a head is, what what light and dark is, what background and foreground, warm and cool colors, what a, what a body is. So it's actually you can somewhat paint in smart ways. Uh, in our newest work, I uh, use that to paint um, uh, the ghost of the machine. I took these, these uh, selfies uh, from my Facebook site and tried to bring some humanity to them or bring out the ghost. So these are recipes now that we can use on any source imagery. And in this case, they get more and more ghostly to bring out the humanity. There's another Facebook um, selfie. What we could do, what Sarah realized is that they had these recipes that I created have some emotional worth. And she took the 30 different recipes that I was using more in this artwork and said, well, why, well if we did a, a full-fledged um, experiment, uh, experimental psychological study, what would people think of these? So she narrowed it down to 15 recipes, and we used this psychological circumspect uh, emotional model, and we had people look at these output from the recipes and uh, basically map or place where they thought it goes emotionally and uh, with with generally pretty high rates of agreement people were deciding certain recipes had certain emotional qualities no matter what source whether we put an abstract dancer or um, a portrait or, or pure abstraction um, she did a second study to validate the first where she used the best four recipes that depict happy, calm, sad, and afraid. And she then asked people that she took their own selfie. So they had to judge their own faces with these. And sure enough, in general, she got over 85% accuracy that people uh, uh, all agreed what was a happy recipe and what was a calm. So we've been using this with the health system here to help with dementia patients, to, with art therapeutic. So you can come in and say, how do you feel today? I feel like my angry face. Uh, let's let's do some breathing, some meditation, some movement to try and look more like your calm face. As we bring in the watch and VR, some of this now we're trying to do is almost automatic just by meditating or breathing correctly. Um, the It changes to that face or that face oozes forwards. Um, so now we're trying to use these systems within movement awareness. So people have been depicting movement in still form and painterly form for hundreds of years. This is uh, the futurist painter Boccioni, who's um, uh, depicting a soccer player. This is a, um, a co-author who moved in. We're using texture analysis of the original to try and do it. This is quite early work. Oops, excuse me, I, I slipped on my mouse there for a second. Uh, of course, we're doing it in this depiction space where someone moves in front of the camera. We get this, this picture that they don't see, and then we depict it uh, as a painting. Uh, um, this is uh, uh, the other um, analysis that we do. Uh, 
so we're getting movement expression for body awareness and this would be the final result this large painting in front of them um, that they're realizing oh i can change simply by moving differently so this is really a painting of me how i how i feel how i move and as we get into emotional tracking uh, um, other aspects of my emotional being you know we've used this work uh, for portraiture and in other ways here last year at, at EVA a lot of you got your portraits taken with the system and we've been doing that in museum spaces and we gave papers at EVA Florence and talked with the Uffizi Touch digital group about maybe using some of these systems for art education uh, so you can see uh, through through your own selfie the mood of a painting and you can experience it in different ways but here again we're doing it with depiction um, so the way it ends up is uh, you would move now with the original the first system uh, it was non-interactive we just needed good data so we would show this intermediary picture intermediate picture to a movement expert they would analyze it they would write up what they think they would see and they would decide of the four emotions it was most uh, related to happy so then we would depict it not in these calm or angry ways but in this way and again this is the art that people see they might want to um, when they see this as a 10 by 10 foot projected painting they could change it by moving differently and here's a calm one uh, and again we want to move into an ab abstraction space I'll be giving a paper later on about some of our very newest AI art techniques that were that do this level of planar abstraction and other kinds this is the newer version that we've done somewhat even after the paper where it's now automatic we give them props so you can see them moving in front of the camera here's me moving in front uh, what they see is these final emotional imagery we could show you some live so this is how you would move in front of the camera this is putting your emotions into a phone and then using that phone in one hand to get the accelerometer data. Uh, and now we're moving into um, going beyond stills into moving paintings. So we're taking this cycle that, that someone does in front of the camera and we're making these highly kind of emotional uh, paintings with deep learning and deep dream techniques um, where it's their emotions, it's, it's uh, balancing other emotional issues for instance this is the bark of a tree and a painting space and it could cycle through so again this is useful for understanding movement it's it's useful in art space we're moving it into um, areas that we want to put it on the internet um, we want to put it on vr spaces and uh, we can really get these different looks i'll be talking about this more in the um, in the second paper and as we add emotions with the watch uh, and these newer techniques that we have that I can get this level of depiction or these level of depictions again this is coming from the, the, the paper I'll be giving later with this level of abstraction that we could make these these dance uh, uh, and movement depictions um, uh, so people can change it and really feel uh, themselves as an art piece so Thank you um, for listening to me today. Um, if you want, if you have questions, uh, you should email me at depalo at gmail.com or go to my website at, website at depalo.org slash eva, um, eva16, depalo.org slash eva16, where you can get um, this talk and other information. So thanks again, uh, and uh, I'll see you maybe for the second paper later today.